All right, and welcome to Now This Is Podcasting. I'm your host, Connor, and I have my co-host, Jaden. Yee. And former guest, Calvin. Thanks for having me back. And we're doing a quick dip on this. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen, I think. Uh, Sweet Girl it came out not too long ago on Netflix. How excited are we to talk about this one? Very. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it the worst because we watched, we've seen Velocipaster. <laughs> I like that better. But than this is movie. this is like frustrating, not only because it's so long, but it, it's just so unentertaining throughout. Yeah. Yeah, I, Jason I think Mimosa that's like, is just not very good. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like the worst brunch. Get drink. a fucking haircut, dude. Um, yeah, I sort of, I wonder what it'll be like when he's in a, he's in Dune and he has, doesn't he have shorter hair than that? No, I'm pretty sure he has long hair. <sighs> I don't think he'll cut it. Yeah, I don't think he'll he hasn't lost a battle yet. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't have a beard in it. That's the thing. Oh, that's he's weird. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. That's the weirdest look he has is. Long hair, no no facial hair. Yeah, that's strange. But I guess they wanted to get away from that. I don't know. I think he'll be good as Duncan Idaho in that. Uh, Idaho. So well, I it's listen, Idaho, dude. I listen to the audiobook, and then <laughs> they say Duncan Idaho. So in he'll like forever be in my head as Duncan Idaho. I guess it's the I, way I read it as well because it says Idaho. Yeah. I think I would read it that way too. It just sounds like it's just so dumb when you're talking about Duke Leto Atreides, and then you have Duncan Idaho. <laughs> <you're doing> Paul. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the book has weird names, dude. Yeah, it'd it, be like, hey, there's this crazy name, and then here's Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, well, I guess that that fits better. But then it's like, yeah, Duncan uh, Idaho, and we got him from the Alabama, Alabama of Caledon. Hell yeah! yeah. Like, right. This is how good this movie is. So we're talking about a book. We're talking about anticipating <laughs> a movie and the book it's based on, <laughs> rather than the film, which is uh, we're actually supposed to be reviewing right now. Uh, so we'll just start out with just kind of first impressions, give if we'd recommend this or not, and then we'll then we'll spoil it after that. Okay, uh, you should spoon your eyeballs out with a pudding spoon before watching this movie. That'd make it easier to watch. Yeah, yeah it would. It would it'd be way less painful. Yeah. <laughs> that's <rough. laughs> that's, uh, that's my first thoughts and uh, recommendation. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I had the same thought like halfway through the film. I was like, why did anyone want to make this? It's 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 hard to get through. It's 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 uninteresting. The entire like plot structure doesn't make any sense because it's like six months 24 months and like what is like why is this still going on yeah. why is this happening like all of the thing all of the like plot points that they felt like they needed to add in order to make everything at the end make sense or like to understand motivation are just it's it makes it a slog it doesn't make it any more interesting it doesn't the the, the motivation the whole motivation can be summed up in about a five minute small scene uh, because it's just as well earned by after going 30 minutes of doing the same thing yeah. and oh, then yeah. ending the film that way. The so, motivation is really shallow in this. Yeah, absolutely. But we needed 30 minutes of um, uh, of setup <laughs> in order to get the same thing. Here yeah. is exposition. You're right. <laughs> yeah. My first impression, just like as the film opened up, I was already worried. It's a, It's like a montage of them camping or something. And it has this terrible voiceover by Jason Momoa. And he's he's reading dialogue that sounds like uh, the writer stole it from some high school kid's poetry homework. It's probably his own. Yeah, it's like a, <laughs> the the past is like a dream where the memories shape us, a mosaic of images and feelings that offer some truth as to how we got here. Even the detail, uh, the, even the details become blurred with time. Um, it's just terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's I'm, just it's terrible writing. Like. Yeah, I'm surprised you actually took the time to write, <laughs> write that down. down. Yeah. That was that's like, actually, I didn't even take the time to remember yeah. that that happened. That's so. that's actually even an abridged version of it, because there's a bit more that goes <laughs> into it. I was like, these are just kind of the high points of it, but it's really bad. I'm, yeah. yeah, that that had me worried. I was like, this film is already trying to trick me into like thinking that it has heart, yeah, and I should actually I, care, and it doesn't. Like, nope. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, like I I only watched this I watched this movie on my phone whenever I was pooping because it deserved about that much of my attention. <laughs> 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 uh so no i would not recommend this uh i think if you get to this point in our review uh i think you could probably just go ahead and you could skip the end of it unless, unless you've, you've already suffered through it yeah yeah uh, but or no. you can just join us now as we recount how awful our experience was yeah please suffer with us yeah you can save yourself about uh what what was it like 110 minutes I don't it's almost know. two hours long. Yeah, it's an hour and 50 minutes yeah. it's unreal it's, how it's long about it an hour and 50 minutes too long yeah, yeah you're right <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah, so we're gonna spoil it now. Um, you have your main character Ray Cooper, portrayed by Jason Momoa. His wife is dying of cancer, and the drug that they need, the generic version of it that's like affordable, is being pulled off the market. And now, like, 
we're all supposed to be mad at like big pharma and then that kind of is what drives this like revenge story he calls onto the the guy is doing an interview on the news he calls like i'm gonna fucking kill you if my wife dies and then like the dude gets murdered whatever it's like okay so there's your suspect did you did you notice that's what the fbi agent says like when they find ray cooper's uh apartment yeah. she's like wow suspect number one here she's yeah like, she's like i think we found our suspect because he has like a like that charlie bay like yeah all the articles and stuff and the, yeah, the, the string strings tying connection. it all together it's like she's like i think we found it. it's like yeah no duh dude like, yeah. of course you found your suspect the guy who called in and said i'll kill him yeah yes. they probably cut the scene where they opened the drawer and it was like a manifesto of how to kill like whatever his name was it's I mean, all like crayon drawings of stick figures yeah <laughs> there, there's there's everything there except a, like a confession letter like saying that like, yes i killed him yeah it, it's so silly i just i hate her dialogues you think we found him yeah you did you did it <laughs> you did it um rachel congratulations rachel is his daughter uh who's the actress that plays her did you guys have that pulled up no no i don't remember i have it somewhere i'll find it uh i i find her to be uh oh I- isabella Merced? M-E-R-C-E-D? Merced. Merced. Okay. I, just, I, just I don't so. know why there's no S there. Merced. she came from the plural Merced and not the, I mean the singular Merced and not the plural family. We can edit that or keep it. I don't care. This Mercedes. Movie probably, I think the person deserves to have her name pronounced right, but this movie doesn't deserve it. She, she actually had, I think, some of the highest points of the whole film in terms of acting. Like there was like that one moment where they were uh, trying to shoot and she's like, oh, I guess I'm just going to forget all of the values you instilled in me as a kid. Dope. And I was like, okay. Really? yeah, That's, that's actually like- <laughs> one of my least favorite parts. I was like, oh God, get off the screen. I, I actually really don't uh, I felt like, like her in this at all. I don't See, like that, that line though, I feel like that's something I would have said sarcastically to someone that uh, like, like, like if, like if my dad had done that, like, oh, I'm just going to forget everything I learned. Okay, dope. I'm, <laughs> we're on the same page. I thought that one was the only time I felt that it was really organic. The rest of them are obviously very contrived, I mean, very I, staged. I can't take any of it organic because they're based in Pittsburgh and not one person in this movie has a Pittsburgh accent. Yeah, why aren't they no walking say, around? No one let's go with, down to the river. Like, no one says yeah. that. <laughs> why, aren't they, why aren't they walking around with, like, terrible towels in their pockets? Yeah, and just, like... Yeah, that, that's, that was Ben that's like, that's like her M.O. whenever she leaves a murder. Like, she just <laughs> throws a terrible towel. <laughs> so we were talking about the acting. I'm surprised you guys didn't find this to be the most compelling bit of acting is when uh, Ray's wife has passed away and Jason Momoa stumbles into the hallway of the hospital. And this is where you just see him acting his heart out. He's just, like, crying. He's like, no, no, God, no, no. <laughs> he even, like, lays on the ground for a minute, like, gets on his knees and... and I think it's awful. I, I can't imagine anyone trying to be uh, like uh, as this dramatic and pulling it off so badly. Yeah. See, um, I, I don't think that. I think there is actually um, a decent bit of acting there, but this the, the framing is terrible. The way that they shot it with the with the camera down the hallway makes it feel very insignificant. It's very um, uh, it's not intimate. Like you're not really getting into. It. Like you're just like, well, it's a crazy guy walking around the halls uh, in the in the hospital. It's not meant to be taken seriously because of how they've shot it. Well, so it also, takes it away. Like it takes away from his performance. Like I there's just, probably something mediocre there, but they made it even worse. Uh, I, I just don't think that Jason Momoa is a very good actor. Yeah, and like in general, I think that everything he's done has been bad. Like his best role is Cal Drago, and like he doesn't say very much. I think or do very much. I think he's fine if you kind of typecast him into that sort of like warrior kind of guy with maybe a little smart ass with him. Like I think he's fine in Aquaman. I think and no, again, Aquaman's the, th- the worst movie of all time. Okay, I mean he's fine as Aquaman as in an every archetype. other film except in like the Justice Aquaman League. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think he'd he'd be he's funny. funny. I think uh, probably his best acting is uh, Baywatch Hawaii. I just yeah really that's, no I've, I've never seen it I'm no I was just like yeah. I didn't even know that that existed that's like where he I think he got his start oh my god yeah wow oh. I mean he looks like he should be on that show hey, when he was younger dude he was freaking I mean he's still that yeah <laughs> I mean that actually like I, that that was the thing that I always um I didn't understand like when we were when I was watching I was like why is he getting his ass kicked this whole movie he's like twice the size of half of these people and he's getting like thrown around yeah yeah i i did notice that too because yeah i was i was trying to because it felt like something was off in all of like his scenes where yeah like uh, we brought up like the how he like can't shoot very well earlier too yeah he's like keeps missing the target and then yeah he like he has a size advantage on like everyone all these minions he's fighting and he but he's still like having a really tough time with it so I, i was trying to figure out i was like i know something's up that kind of what i the conclusion i came to i was like oh he must be like maybe he's sick too 
Yeah. He just didn't like want to let on to Rachel that he was sick because his wife is also dying. He didn't want to leave her alone or he didn't want to like end his life without carrying out this lack, last act of vengeance. And so I thought maybe that's why he was kind of getting his ass beat and he can't shoot because I was like, you know, he's sick. He must be like weaker than he normally is. Uh, did you guys have any like thoughts on like why that was going on? Nope. Well, I thought it was, I just, it was in line to me with like it being ridiculous. Like I was like, okay, so we're just going to, we just want to drive up the, the action and the conflict as much as possible. So if he's not overpowering everybody, then we don't need as many set pieces. We don't need as many fights or, uh, other characters. He can just keep fighting the same person over and over. And then, because I mean, I felt like it, it was established that we're not really going to care about like what pain or what a mortal wound is when he got stab- stabbed in the stomach and just like bleeding out on the train. Like, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess okay, we, people can live through those sorts of things. So we're just going to get our asses kicked the whole film and it's just going to be okay because it's just like just tumbling around and no real damage is done. So yeah. I felt like that was established and I was just like, I was going to carry that on with my. It's not like I was suspending disbelief, but I was like, these are the rules that you've established for your fights. I'll just take them at face value. It's just weird for a, like a Jason Momoa to show up in a movie and not be like Wrecking House, you know, because that's yeah. like th- that's why I was like, something must be off because you don't cast this guy unless you want him to punch people in the face. Yeah. You know, speaking of uh, oh, especially since he's a boxer, I forgot. I mean, that's the other oh, yeah. thing. He's a yeah. trained fighter. I yeah. felt that it was good that they did establish that. Like, he's not just like a big dude. Like, he's he's someone that absolutely could tear your head off because right. he's also has the training. Yeah. And speaking of him showing up and like, you know, being like this brave fighter kind of guy, uh, Brian Mendoza directed this and he's been the producer on uh, Braven, uh, Road to Paloma, Frontier. And uh, these are all like Jason Momoa vessels. Like he's the star of all these where he plays like a badass in it. Uh, they also work together. Uh, he, Jason Momo has a writing credit on a, a movie that just wrapped up called Last Manhunt. So I'm kind of wondering what his writing chops are like. But uh, Brian Mendez is the executive producer on that. So it's kind of a, a, almost all of his stuff has Jason Momo in it, except for like shorts that he's done. All This is his first like feature. Mm. Uh, and of course it's starring Jason Momoa, but yeah, it's just weird to me that you cast him and then you don't like really utilize kind of, kind of that part of his character that something that people recognize that name and you expect to see that in a film, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was for reasons of this movie, but I mean, the first time I noticed that that was just part of like, oh, this movie just sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was going on. So what do we think about the whole, I guess, big pharma aspect of this? Because I think it's 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 something that is probably important to talk about, and I just wish it was in the service of a better movie to like have this topic brought up. I, I think th- it's kind of glossed over. I think it's just an easy thing to connect people with, and they use it. Yeah, I don't think it's like anything like oh, this guy's against big pharma or anything like the right or anything like that. I think he's like oh, people typically don't like big pharma. This is a reason why. Let's utilize this and have them connect with this character. Yeah, it's like and I thought it was just a crutch, and it wasn't. I didn't care about it at all. It's like manufacturing feelings. Yeah. 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 You're just tapping into uh, the American outrage um, towards healthcare in general. It's not, it doesn't even say anything like this is a, like how anything actually works in terms of like the fact that it was, everybody knew that like, oh yeah, there was a payoff to pull the generic from the, uh, from the market. Like it, it seemed like, well, if we know it, like wouldn't, the, wouldn't someone be investigating it? And yeah, the it's just weird. I mean, that does happen like, with insulin. In yeah, the real world. I mean, yeah, there's that, but it just felt like, yeah. In the context agreed. of this story, <laughs> it, it seems it just it uh, that part of it doesn't get fleshed out enough. They're just hoping that the viewer is, is upset enough about it to match like the outrage that the characters have, and it's just manufactured to me. It doesn't it, none of it's like earned. So this is lazy. Yeah, this way it seemed to me like not that like you couldn't use that aspect of the film and like make it good. It just seemed like oh, let's just throw that in there so we don't have to think about shit. Yeah, exactly. It, like, they, they could have used any current topic of hot debate that most people feel the same way about, and they would have run with that. Yep. Right. Um, do we want to move on to the twist? I mean, that's oh. kind of the, that's kind of the show. That's yeah, it's... let's go for it, dude. So the film opens up with Ray on the roof of a building. He's confronted by the FBI agent, and he's just like, I didn't want it to, it wasn't supposed to happen this way. He's like, I didn't mean to or whatever, and then he jumps off into the water. And that scene is replayed again at the end or towards the end. And uh, you realize that it's not actually Ray on the roof. It's Rachel with sort of this personification of Ray. And that Ray died earlier in the film during the train fight. Yep. And yeah, so, who actually was stabbed. Yes. Yeah. And so from then on, 
Ray isn't actually in the like he's not physically in the film anymore. It's just a, a personification that like Rachel has taken on, I think, to kind of help her survive and kind of help her uh, carry out this like revenge that she wants. Yeah. Which, again, it's like a very shallow revenge story. I think it's pretty boring. Uh, but I think the twist is neat. And that twist then plays into, well, why is Ray getting his ass kicked the whole time? Well, it's because it was Rachel and she's way undersized compared to these guys. And why can't Ray shoot? It's like, well, because it's Rachel. She doesn't really know how to use a gun. And so I thought like those those like little bits tie in well with the twist. It made those parts make more sense to me. So I, that's like the one clever thing this movie had going for it, I think. Did you guys get anything out of that twist or was it like, uh, why is this in the movie? Uh, I was... At that point when that happened, I was like, man, they should have really just never made this. <laughs> I hated it. I hated every second of it. Like, as soon as it happened, like, yeah, not only do they show you that, like, oh, this is why she was, like, missing with the guns and, like, couldn't fight people because it, like, goes back to those scenes and show her, right. shows her actually doing it instead of Ray. Um, like, it made sense. Like, I was like, okay, so that makes sense why he sucked the last, like, 45 minutes of this movie. And I was like, but this movie sucks more now because of this. Okay. And that's the way I felt. I was just like, yeah. At that point, I literally pretty much just checked out of this movie. I was like, yeah, I'm not interested in anything that's going to happen from here on. Which is forward. unfortunate because there's like another half hour after that. Yeah. Like that should be like pretty close to your climax. Like you need to start closing out like, you know, get her to like where she gets her passports and she's she's hitting the road and she's getting yeah. out of there. But it like keeps going after yeah. that. It was fucking awful. Yeah. And I thought the same thing like... um when I when it first happened, I was like, "Oh, that's actually kind of clever," um, it, because I mean, we talk about Jung a lot on on the, our podcast, podcast, and we talk about general psychology um, projections of uh, inner turmoil into onto characters within within a narrative, and so I thought that was kind of interesting. But it's only interesting if you think about it just at that surface level. The moment you actually go back and look at their their dialogues uh, between the two of them when Ray has died, they're so strange. It is not what you would think of an inner dialogue, someone wrestling with the shadow self, or even like if you would think of of Ray being uh, an animus projection, you know, the, the male um, uh, part of her subconscious as being the embodiment of who we're seeing on screen. They don't work well together. Like they're just, they're just kind of, they're trying they try too hard to make it real a real conversation like between two separate people that it then does not work how it they actually it actually is happening you know within a, a single individual so they're right. very that you're doing you're trying to do you're trying to keep your twist as secret as possible but then when you honor it it doesn't reward a rewatch then because when you would go back and watch all of that, it was like well none of this makes any sense with what I know now is ha- actually happening right right uh, I think Calvin and, Calvin and I had talked earlier about the the scene where he's he's getting out of the car to get in a gunfight or whatever, and Ray tells Rachel he's like stay in the car. So why would Rachel be telling Rachel to stay in the car? Like that that's, yeah. that's what the dialogue you're talking about. It doesn't make sense. Or yeah. like dumping her in the middle of the woods. You know, like you're just gonna get get out of the car. I'm gonna go. You're just gonna stay in the in the woods over here. And it's like. It, it makes zero sense. You just think that he's being an asshole because, like, th- th- this makes no sense for, like, how you would treat a daughter. Like, she's not safe. She's in the middle of nowhere with no resources. So that if you take that line out, it works slightly better. But with it, it's significantly worse. Yeah, yeah I think that maybe the hope was that you would view this as, like, this is the, re- like, Ray represents, like, this drive for revenge that she has. And she's trying to compartmentalize like the more innocent Rachel who wants to remember the lesson she was taught by her dad. She wants to do the right things. You know, she she's being kept away from this violence by being told to stay in the car. And so I think maybe you could view that as like psychologically she's trying to compartmentalize these two identities she has away from each other. But I just don't think this movie is clever enough and it's not acted well enough. And it's it's like overly dramatic in these scenes for me to like really buy into that concept. But I think if you, I, I'm, I'm, my guess would be that was the intention of like the the script and the director for that, is that we would take it that way. I just think it's done really badly. Yeah, yeah. Do we have final thoughts on this one? Um, it sucks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it, dude. That's my only thought on this movie. Yeah, it's a mildly interesting plot uh, or interesting twist. With I think it's over dramatic in parts. I don't think it's acted very well. Um, Oh, and also, like, I mean, the ending. Like, why? Why did we have to make it seem like it was like, like, for her to get her way to have gotten the confession out of the senator finally, and then get off scot free with 
getting out of the country. Yeah. It, it was implausible. No, nothing in this movie makes sense. Like she looks up did, to her dad, I? who's a fucking murderer. Yeah, yeah, and he also like that was the other thing I really I did struggle with is like you didn't even make the personification of Ray at any point in the film. Like even when he was alive, um, and then his personification uh, as coming from Rachel, he wasn't endearing. Like no. he was just like I feel like they tried to set up some moments of them being like goofy, like oh don't tickle me, but like he was like you could tell he was just being he was grumpy. Like he's not someone to mess around with and be be loving. No, you know? yeah, he seemed like a bad dad and yeah. kind of a bad dude in general. Yeah, just I'm calls being him honest. Yeah. yeah, he calls the dude on the news and says, like, "I'm going to murder you." Yeah, he calls. Oh, I'll look up to you, dad. Yeah, and he calls his woman, his uh, wife, woman, and like that's kind of funny. But like, man is is a colloquialism uh, in a way that woman is not. Yeah, there's a there's a sense of condescension and power dynamic there that 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 doesn't play the same way when you refer to someone back. Like, if you call me man, I'm going to call you woman. There's there's a clear difference in terms there's of social. Hierarchy. connotations to the words for exactly sure. and so i didn't it's not it's again not endearing of him to say that to someone that he loves yeah this is a, a three out of ten pills of that sparrow medication for me oh this is like absolute zero. <laughs> oh, okay yeah yeah i, Just, I shouldn't I, have made the movie yeah i'll give it i'll give it a 3.1 it's wow, it, okay. it's, it gives it does some things like i think but, it does nothing i think the twist is awful yeah, I think everything, it, I think everything it is about awful. That. I mean, it's like at least this thing's not out of focus, you know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> like that's how low our bar has been recently. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing else. If you guys are good, yeah, yeah. No, I'm good. Don't watch this movie. Yeah, yeah. If you made it through the spoilers, we have the same message as the non-spoiler yeah. section. This is not worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, uh, I'm your host Connor. I have my co-host Jaden and former guest Calvin. Thanks for having me back. And thank you for listening to now. This is podcasting.